and then we're good to go. So welcome everyone and um, especially welcome to our uh, team of post MSc students from Sudan who will be um, sharing today at, at today's webinar for the Transformation Pathways Planning Project their progress so far with their work to uh, develop well, as this title slide already says, a strategic transformative vision um, and master plan for the Gezira irrigation scheme in Sudan. Um, yeah, I think we're all uh, very interested to hear what you have been up to so far and what your sort of preliminary results are. So I'd like to give the floor to, uh, to the team. And I would like to also ask to maybe very briefly introduce uh, yourselves. Okay, thank you, Liam, for a nice introduction. Uh, we will introduce ourselves. Uh, hi, everyone. Hi, uh, thank you for joining us today. We will st start with our presentation, which will uh, introduce you what we have been doing since January in our project which is uh, our strategic transformative vision and development of master plan for the Jazeera irrigation scheme in Sudan. Uh, through this presentation, then we will open a stage for question and finally we will wrap up. Uh, okay. This is the outline of our presentation today. Uh, I will introduce you to the Jazeera Irrigation Scheme, and then my colleague Dalal will continue the project objective or uh, the baseline study that we were working on, the methodology, the analysis, and the finding. After that, we will continue with the first uh, workshop that we had it last month, the challenges that we faced through this study, and finally, our future steps. So coming to who we are, we are a group of IG MSc graduated who conducted our research in different topics related to the Jazeera scheme and diversity with different topics and approaches. Two of us have experience in working in, uh, in the scheme. The team members consist of Dalal, Fatima, which is me, uh, Rezan, uh, Mahmoud, and Iqbal. We had the support of the supervisor, a baby, uh, Andres, Yab, Leon, and Marlos. I will start with an uh, introduction to the Jazeera scheme. Uh, the Jazeera scheme was established in 1920s with, uh, with, uh, by, by the British colonization in order to support their textile industry uh, in the beginning, it started with two sectors. On the, on the right, bottom, and up, which is called Jazeera sectors, north and south, uh, the Jazeera, uh, north and south of Jazeera, and then after the independence in 1960s, what the extension of the east and west of Managel, which is at the left, in the middle, and bottom, of this picture. Uh, the Jazeera scheme is considered one of the world's largest irrigation projects in the world. It is spanned in, uh, in about uh, 900,000 hectares, and it's located in the central of Sudan between the Blue Nile and the White Nile. Uh, the location of the Jazeera scheme characterized as a semi-arid zone with unpredictable rainfall and high temperature. The scheme is very important for Sudan economy. According to study in 2020, it was contributing by 42% of the Sudan GDPs. Uh, coming to the irrigation system in the scheme, the irrigation system is gravity irrigation. The main source of the water is Sinar Dam, which is located in the Blue Nile. Uh, it consists of extensive network of canals totaling approximately 5,000 kilometers in length. The irrigation system comprises of two main canals, the Jazeera Canal uh, to irrigate the Jazeera sectors and the Managil Canal to irrigate the Managil sectors. Uh, it consists of 11 branch, 107 major 
canal and approximately 1,500 minor canal. Uh, at the top of the management of the scheme is the Jazeera, uh, is the Sudan Jazeera board, which is responsible for overall operation, agricultural services, and coordinate with the Ministry of Irrigation and Water Resources for Water. Uh, the, then the Ministry of Irrigation and Water Resources, which is responsible for the irrigation and water management. There is two research institutes, the Agricultural Research Center, which is uh, conduct various uh, agricultural research. The Hydraulic Research Center, which will play uh, an important role in the scheme by addressing the irrigation challenges. And finally, the farmer who are, who are responsible for their field management. Over the time, the scheme has been through different policies and irrigation management. However, in the past year, the scheme was facing several challenges worsening the water delivery system, the food production, and hindering water uh, management effort. Uh, then we'll continue with the project objective and plan, which is uh, will be by the lab. Continue by the lab. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Do you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, the, this project uh, is uh, aiming to contribute to sustainable production for the Gezi irrigation scheme through crafting strategic transformative vision for the scheme. Uh, and this vision will focus on enhancing the irrigation performance, boosting productivity, promoting inclusive development, and ensuring sustain sustainable futures. So uh, key activities for this for the project include drafting a comprehensive baseline document, integrating research findings, collecting view, future visions uh, by consulting various groups and individuals, creating transformative pathways, uh, effectively communicate findings to a broad audience at each step. So the baseline, which is the first step we conducted. Uh, that we started in January 15 by collecting data from literature and remote sensing sources covering the biophysical, socioeconomic, and institutional aspects of the scheme. This data was then interpreted for each aspect. So uh, the findings of the baseline uh, show the yield gap due to an inadequate field management practices. Inequities were observed within the scheme, particularly in the allocation of social services and distribution of different resources. Uh, yeah, additionally, deficiencies in law enforcement and conflict resolution mechani mechanism were noted in the field and attribu attributed to the unclear policies of the scheme. So after the after we uh, did the data collection, we make a, we made a system analysis for the whole scheme. So we set four objectives: uh, first, to reach the food security; secondly, ensure, ensure sustainable use of resources. Uh, thirdly, thirdly, increase income and the income considering national income and farmers' income. And finally, improve inclusivity and equity between the scheme participants. So to achieve these objectives, we develop three actions or means, uh, ensuring sustainable agricultural practices, and this is the uh, uh, right side, left side, sorry. <laughs> ensuring sustainable agricultural practices, uh, reforming of the institutional setup, enhancing community uh, well-being. If you look at the diagram, we can see the interaction and the casual relations between the internal system elements. For example, ensuring the sustainability of agricultural practices by optimizing resource organization uh, and enhance both land and water productivity. So this entails improving field practices like land leveling and weed control, and also to reduce the water losses, and this could be done through maintaining irrigation infrastructure and, in, and developing seeds varieties, such as drought tolerant seeds. seeds. So uh, enhanced productivity in turn will support food security and sustainable use of resources. Uh, on 29 of April, we uh, conducted a workshop for stakeholders, and the purpose of this uh, workshop is to strengthen uh, the project, uh, the next slide, is to strengthen the project baseline findings with the stakeholders' perspectives, uh, then getting uh, their feedbacks on the gaps that need to be filled on the baseline report. 
So a summary of the report was shared earlier with the workshop invitees to be acquainted with the baseline findings. The, only, the online workshop is supposed to be the first session of two. It's starting with four questions from the biophysical part, followed by another four questions from the socioeconomic and institutional part. And uh, there was a very interesting discussion. Uh, we had uh, sought full feedbacks from the uh, workshop participants. So the workshop main, po main points of discussion were uh, the reasons behind the increased gap between the actual wheat yield and the potential yield, uh, reasons behind inequity in irrigation water distribution, missing correlation between biophysical elements, that a gap in the biophysical assessment, effects of farmers' financial instability on yield production, and also effect of the informal practices uh, on the on-farm water management. Current challenges uh, is in water management also discussed, and the uh, improvement of implementation of water management laws. The outcomes of the work workshop highlighted several critical uh, concerns impacting the agricultural production. So key issues identified uh, including poor field, field management attributed to delays in the disbursement of funds and support, uh, support uh, also significant water management challenges and a notable lack of effective communication. The workshop identified major maintenance issues causing significant water management problems. So to address this, it was recommended to improve financing for the maintenance coverage by aligning water fees with the maintenance cost and enhance the damage uh, prevention strategy strategies and foster better collaboration between government, farmers' unions, and financial institutions. Uh, in the workshop, uh, it was suggested to study the impact of the climate change impact on the scheme, observing the recent environmental change. Uh, so the workshop also emphasized the need to update the Gezira scheme policies and laws, ensuring clarity of responsibilities and uh, also key recommendations, including enhancing the capacity of the scheme participant and adopting advanced technologies and improving communication channels. Uh, the challenges uh, of the work of the workshop and the uh, project uh, in, in at all, uh, the biggest one is the board of in Sudan. So it affected the Gazira schemes of the Gazira state uh, severely and the communication plan out, which was started in last February, uh, led to the disconnection with the stakeholders and scheme staff who still live there. We mainly depended on the data from the gray literature because of this disconnection and previous studies also, in addition to the supplied data for the biophysical part. Uh, so besides this scheme complicity, which entails a lot of management and water management issues, the unclarity of the scheme is current uh, situation also uh, challenged the system analysis of the scheme. So uh, that, that's what we did so far, and for the next days and weeks, we are planning to conduct focus group discussion, targeting diverse groups and individuals who have unique visions about the scheme. Uh, we already drafted a list of potential individuals uh, so, and, and, and groups. So after collecting the different perspectives from these groups, uh, we will develop action points and pathways leading to the visions that contribute to the Gezira scheme future. So that's what we have uh, uh, now. And uh, if you have any questions, feedbacks, please feel free to communicate. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dalal and Fatima. That was uh, very interesting. And uh, I think we have ample time for discussion and maybe also if people would like some further uh, clarification. Um, if you want, you can stop sharing the screen. Then we see each other in a bit, uh, a bit more complete picture. I don't know if there are yeah. questions okay. already in the room. Yeah. If so, maybe just to ra raise your hand or or simply unmute. That's at this stage also still fine, I think. Uh, Marisa? Yeah, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. It was very interesting to see 
to try to understand the whole area, but I feel it's extremely big, very, very large. Are you focusing in, in a specific place of the complete scheme with some groups? How, how are you focusing on this? We look as this, uh, we look as the scheme. Uh, thank you for your question. We looked at the scheme for uh, as a whole. We didn't we couldn't reach to certain area or a group. We tried to collect every data or any information we can reach it from the stakeholders, uh, and we tried to know from the different places from the question and interviews with the stakeholder. But we took the scheme as the one unit. We didn't took certain area to study it. Is it answering? Your yes, question? thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Okay. Um, yes, thank you. And um, Wim? Yeah, uh, thank you for the presentation. I, I, I thought it was very um, interesting. And also for me, because I don't know uh, your country very well or, or the scheme. And indeed, it's, it's huge. Yeah. And, um, but I think it's also very uh, brave of you um, students from, from Sudan working on this topic eh, while the situation back home is, um, is so difficult. So um, um, I think that is, that is really, um, uh, yeah, really nice that you, that you do that. And, and so I, I had a question about in this system analysis diagram, you mentioned um, on top of it, I saw um, extreme events and I was not sure whether um, um, that is extreme events or external yes, events. Yes, extreme events. E extreme events. So what do you mean with uh, with extreme events? Is that also, for instance, the, the current uh, war situation in, in your country or? Yes, it includes the war situation and also excludes the climate change situation uh, because like we didn't uh, in the past few years like the, we had several floods uh, events and also we ex uh, it, uh, exposed to drought events like it was not balanced and new to the skin. So we took three uh, elements under it. The war situation, which we don't know anything about it, like at the moment, the Zarian scheme, how does it its impact? We try to look at the flood situation and also the drought situation that we heard it from the workshop, uh, the first workshop that we conducted in April mm. last month. So this yeah. is... Yeah. And you mentioned this workshop because uh, so so that is actually also, I mean, who who were the participants of this workshop and how did you manage to find people? Yes. Yeah, in the current difficult situation, interested to to join your 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 workshop. So I was curious about that as well. Um, hello. So I can answer for that. I don't know if you hear me. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, sure. Okay. Uh, so uh, we were targeting like uh, diverse stakeholders from the group, but as mentioned, because of the blackouts and uh, everything, unfortunately, we weren't able to include. Uh, a very diverse group in the workshop, but still we had like about uh, 15 participants. Uh, mostly there were researchers uh, related to the scheme. Uh, there were people from the Ministry of Agriculture and also people that were uh, in the Sudan Jazeera board. So related to the management of the scheme at a, a higher scale. Uh, so we were, uh, it was a good like group that could give us some insights at least about uh, what's missing in our report, but we were wishing for a more diverse one, and we hope we can achieve that with developing the vision for the next focal discussion groups that we're planning for. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, 
uh, it included a former uh, governor of the scheme, okay. the workshop, yeah. Okay, interesting. Hey, and, and is the scheme currently uh, functioning or, or also given the situation or? or... Yeah, it is partially working because partially. Uh, it, is not, it is not a concrete information from the field kind of report in the social media talking about the scheme uh, already started before the war. The, the season which started before the war is still people, uh, farmers are trying to work but uh, there is a problem in the um, in reaching uh, the market and the conflicts inside some areas also cut the farmers from reaching their fields so it is i think it is partially working but it is still social media reports so i am not sure mm. okay thank you yeah very interesting yeah thank you uh, also vim lakshmi i see you also have your hand raised Hi, thank you, Leon. And yeah, thank you for the presentation. I have um, a particular question regarding the pathways and the, the three different topics you put in the system analysis uh, diagram. Are these related? Are these going to be like the inspiration for those pathways? I missed a little bit that connection so I was wondering if you could explain a little bit more if you are going to like be based on that uh, to to kind of identify possible pathways or that's just a, a different further step. I don't know if my question is clear. Yes, it's clear. Uh, like this is, we put it as a guideline vision for us. We develop it by ourselves like we, found, we develop it from the gap and the analysis we made, and also we develop it from what we have experienced by, from the interviews and the, the workshops that we had it with, uh, from, uh, with a stakeholder, but it wasn't like as a vision vision. So the next step is try to uh, try to see the actual desire of the stakeholder and then what the actions that can be done if it if it fits for example like the scheme is mainly uh, uh, it was for cotton but then in the 1970s additional uh, uh, additional crops were added the main goal from it is food security uh, the, the main goal of it is for uh, food security. So like from our analysis, we identify food security, security can be a goal. We can reach it from, uh, from uh, in, in the future, for example, as a vision from our side. Uh, also like it's already was contributing to the national income and to the farmer income. So we put it also like it can be part of the vision in the future is still supporting this kind of uh, existing uh, goals were in the scheme, but still there is uh, uh, challenges to reach these goals. Uh, from this step, like next step is to see if there is a new vision, or if there is different vision, if there is something we can add to the original vision from different stakeholders and what the kind of action we gonna need it we're going to need, uh, according to their experience, to reach these multiple uh, goals. Um, this is this is for me, if someone wants to add in. Uh, yeah, as, as she said, uh, it's basically, it was setting an initial vision for us to help us understand the system better and how all of the interactions happen. And then it will be adjustable based on the expectations of the multiple stakeholders from the future of the scheme. We started already to draft, as I said in the presentation, a uh, kind of list. This list uh, include uh, people who participated in the workshop before and new people who have uh, different backgrounds, different than researchers, different than scheme staff to have an out-of-box uh, vision about the scheme or something new that we don't know, we cannot imagine, we cannot, um, from our experience and the baseline to uh, uh, draw it. So uh, 
these people will not be oriented about the baseline. They will not be uh, aware about our initial vision. Uh, we just need their uh, imagination to work how how this scheme will be uh, in the coming years. So this will uh, give us more space to um, uh, include other aspects that we are we didn't include before. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Uh, I see Andres. Uh, Andres, please. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for uh, for the presentation. Always uh, uh, nice to hear and see how you guys uh, are advancing. The, at the end, uh, you mentioned, I think, the challenges. Uh, you said one of the challenges was the war, and the other challenge, I think, was the complexity. Did, did I saw that correct? Yeah. Yes, the scheme complexity. Can I hear you? Maybe that's the question. And we can hear you, Andres, but I don't know if you. Oh. Um, do you hear us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay. So uh, I was asking about the complexity, which I think you posed as one of the challenges. And I wondered if you can elaborate a little bit on that, on what that complexity then is. So um, we're talking about the scheme itself, the management system, and the uh, the large say, space that the scheme have different uh, com community uh, components in the, inside the scheme, and also uh, the law and the policies and the evolution of the scheme itself during the past years since it is its establishment and uh, passing by all the the governments that. Uh, have uh, led the uh, scheme management. So it is a very unique uh, structure for a culture scheme and have a uh, different social um, uh, groups. So these kind of dynamics inside the scheme make it more complex than any system that maybe uh, we have experienced in our, uh, in our, in our uh, career or research life. Hmm. Yeah, so the I think that itself is already, I don't know if you agree with me, uh, you guys are better into it, have written more. That is itself kind of a, already an, an observation that is not made a lot because the, it is actually a really legible scheme. You have 1500 of these minor canals that are all divided in exactly the same uh, uh, land units uh, each farmer has exactly the same uh, amount of land, at least on paper, uh, and the uh, and it is a it is a colonizing scheme. So th there were not a lot of villages before the scheme was constructed. So I wondered to what extent uh, you found that among the people, maybe in your workshop, or that you have a, 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 a question before if they also acknowledge that complexity or if they say like it's not that difficult but people have to just behave according to what the scheme tells them to do which is then not complexity actually we we had we had like uh, the reflection from the stakeholders that there is multiple challenges in the scheme and it's hard to one of the uh, one of the participants i remember he said like it's hard to put us all like all of all of the stakeholder in one table to agree on 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 single thing so maybe it can be reflecting on the skin complicity but also from the challenging uh, resolving uh, mechanisms that they can adopt or uh, uh, implement in the scheme uh, what do you think <laughs> Yes, yes, and to just to be to be aware about about the uh, previous work which was done by these the by the ministry and the stakeholders of the scheme, their many strategies was was uh, this was I mean previous um, attempts to do strategy for the scheme. Some of them completed, some are not. But no, no, any strategy was implemented in the scheme till now. 
uh, according to my knowledge. Yeah. The, I don't know if is others it, have questions. I think it's okay, Andres. I think you can ask some more if you have some further yeah, questions. And if if not, people, please raise your hand if you want to want to ask something. But so Andres, this is continue. also a, a question for for basically everyone uh, uh, present. That the, uh, but also uh, uh, for the Lal, uh, um, Fatima, and uh, and Hassan. That observation that there's that there's actually a lot of complexity of uh, 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 differently interested communities, very diverse stakeholders from all different kinds of backgrounds. That maybe it's not so uniform this uh, division of land as uh, as it appears because of all kinds of tenure uh, arrangements. Have you observed that that has been the point of departure of other strategies? And if not, what is what does that mean for for what you are going to do now? Um, actually, the one the recent one, which uh, we informed about it uh, by Abraham, if you know him from the studies, uh, no, Meta Meta, Meta sorry Meta Meta, uh, he he was he uh, described what what uh, what they was trying to do. So it is mainly technical. They was developing a strategy to improve the technical parts, but they included some social aspects on also. Uh, but the difference in this uh, strategy or this uh, our work is that we started with the three aspects in, at the same time. I mean, we have a complete baseline about the uh, socio-economic, uh, institutional, and technical. So more, more focus was given to the, um, were, were given to the um, technical aspects more than the others. So for this strategy, I think the unique thing is that we are including all the aspects. And for the, for the uh, coming days that we are consulting people who are not um, in the management system of the scheme and are not researchers, that means we have other aspects of the community members. And we are, we, if we are uh, lucky to reach some people in the scheme, especially the community, it will be a very uh, good step that we have the vision for the future of the scheme. Okay. Yeah, that is, I, I was also wondering a little bit about that. So, so because as, uh, as, as some others already said, it's, it's really remarkable that you have been able to, to work on this so far given the situation with the war you also mentioned that for the first workshop uh, you had uh, uh, mainly researchers and government people and it was already i think a really nice achievement that you were able to to get to get them to to attend your workshop but as you say now for for for, for making the vision you would ideally also want to include more stakeholders and 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 a diversity of community members and and users inside the scheme um but then is do you think that that is that is actually feasible or how and how would you go about it uh i think uh what we can do is even if uh we couldn't reach like the different stakeholders we can at least try to grasp people who have uh, worked from the perspective of these people, even if we have no other option than researchers, we can at least target researchers that have been working from the perspective of different stakeholders. So we will try our best to find a way to somehow include all the possible perspectives for the scheme. We started to communicate some people maybe not necessarily are working, worked in the scheme, but are living in Gezira. So uh, just to know that anybody lives in Gezira state has something to do with the scheme. I mean, the whole state or especially the, the people who live uh, near to the scheme, uh, they have this kind of vision. They can have this vision because they are related to the scheme in a way or another, at least they are there. So uh, communicating with some artists, journalists, uh, 
and uh, people who live in the Jazeera stay will be useful also, not necessarily working in the scheme itself. Okay, thank you. It yeah, sounds like a, a good, a good, uh, a good idea to go about it. How it works, Marisa? Yeah, uh, I I would like to know how many people live live in the area. I miss that. I, I don't get the the idea. Do you know the population in the area? Uh, we we calculated it because we have no recent information about the population in the Gezira. In the whole Sudan, for, 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 for us, we have no kind of formal calculation for the population in Sudan since 2010. So we have uh, some reports from the World Bank talking about 2,000, uh, more than 2,000 people in the scheme. We calculated it according to the growth rate uh, of the Sudan, and then we found like 5,000, it's 5 million. Uh, five, five. Five million. Five million, sorry, five, five million. million plus, five million plus. Mm. Okay. It's a very complicated situation for you now, huh? Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Transformation code. I have another. Uh, uh thought maybe that occurred to me uh, the i think it, if uh, so i'm also working in a, a case in india and it is in a way a similar scheme that there is a dam and that dam then leads to a certain uh, weir and that weir divides water in this case in three big canals in your case in two big canals and then <clears throat> If you try to find information about uh, uh, that system, then most of the work that you find takes a relatively small area in that uh, uh, in that scheme as its unit of analysis, and then connects it to the bigger one. And I was thinking that most of the studies that I read about the Gezira scheme start with this top-down. Uh, 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 same sharing of information about how many tenants and uh, how many canals and so i wondered if you have found any uh, uh, studies that that have their focus on a particular village or a particular sector of a relatively small sector of the canal mm -hmm. kind of anthropological study that talks about village relations uh, uh, to oh, yeah. sort of open up to the complexity that, is... that there are many different users and not just these tenant farmers. Um, according to, me, to my uh, knowledge, there is no uh, is research dedicated to this uh, kind of analysis, but there is a social um, studies about the scheme, talking about the cannabis, uh, the, the villages where the uh, farmers live, uh, and this, mm? they call them labor there. Yeah, labor. Was, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I call them farmers, and it's called labor. <laughs> yeah, good for you. Yeah, so um, there's many studies about it, uh, but how this, this about their origins and about how they live. Uh, so, but I didn't find anything talk about how the uh, communication between the Canadi people or the uh, laborers and the um, other community, uh, communities in the scheme. Yeah, yeah. And there is no mainly social like a study for a certain uh, area or location, except what we hear from uh, Abraham, as uh, Delan mentioned earlier, that uh, it was mainly technical, but also, they choose it mainly on the, their observation that this uh, location, all of the farmers grow the same, they collectively communicate and grow the same crops and manage their water, their water collectively. And this is why the reason they choose their, their, their location to study it and uh, make some improvement and rehabilitation to the canal, which is mainly was technical, but like the studies and like uh, they choose it according to a social behavior. Mm. But there is no mainly a socialist study or complete study, for example, 
to to search the location. Yeah, okay, thank you. I think this was a really interesting presentation and, and discussion, and I think there is indeed a lot of uh, uh, respect for, for what you have been able to do in, in these difficult circumstances. Um, so, so, that, so, so thanks a lot. Um, I think the next stage will also be quite uh, exciting, and, and I was also happy to to notice that that you could also reach out to our other colleagues and other notes in, in Transpath. I think especially with Lakshmi, you have had a few meetings to discuss how to go forward after the baseline. So that's also really nice. And also then in that sense, a really nice part of, of, the, of the larger Transpath project. I don't know if you want to say anything on on closing uh, uh, Sudan team, uh, Fatima Rezandalal, uh, then this is your 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 closing uh, opportunity. Actually, uh, I would like to start that this was a really good experience for me, and until now I'm learning uh, because, like, I come from a completely technical background, so this is all new to me, but I'm learning and. I think we all are, so this is really good. Uh, we would, would like to hear from any of the other uh, Node team members if they have any like recommendations for us on how to start the next phase or given especially if there are like in any of the other projects uh, similar challenges or other challenges that they think that we can address our challenges similar to how they uh, started developing their pathways or everything, anything they can share with us. Yeah, that's a good that's a good question for all uh, for all the other notes. I don't know if there are people who would like to already respond. I think there is a lot of difference also between the different notes i think some notes actually have quite some experience maybe also from prior projects in in working and developing pathways and for others i think it's also a new challenge that just as for your team but if not then maybe also in, in the in the near future they can share their experiences yeah, with, with you uh, yeah. via email or they can they can reach you via andres abebe yap and and, and myself Okay, thank you very much. Then, uh, as we close uh, uh, this presentation and, and discussion on, on the development of this of this vision for a transformative vision for, for the Gazira irrigation scheme, let me hand over to uh, to Yap, who joined us to see if there are any final things you wanted to say related to, to the webinar series in, in general. Thank you, uh, Leon, and uh, thank you, uh, Sudan team. I came in uh, way later than uh, than I hoped for, actually. So I'm definitely going to uh, rewatch the the recordings when available, and also I will let my, uh, inform myself later because I see that you are quite near, actually, to me. So <laughs> I will see you soon. So thank you very much. Um, in four weeks from now, I think the twenty fourth of um no not the 20 the it is when is it scheduled i see the 17th of june uh, we have our next webinar and uh kelvin omieno is uh, then presenting his uh wetland app so he's going to talk about uh, the tool that he is uh, using in uh, transformative change how can contribute to it so i'm very much looking forward to it Again, as always, this is then also an invitation to um, put your name on the list uh, for presenting in the future. There are quite some slots open towards uh, the end of the year. Thank you very much. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing you all online soon. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us for our webinar today. Yeah, thanks a lot for the presentation and the discussion. Goodbye, Thank everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you.